Hey everybody, this is Nick with Idle Up and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the leather jacket that I'm currently wearing, which is the Manufacturing First Raider jacket. It's a leather jacket that sits around the $300 price point, and if you compare it to other jackets on the market, I think you'll find it's a pretty good deal. I'm going to tell you about a few things I like and dislike about the jacket, and then I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not it's a good fit for you. So with that said, let's get into this. Hey guys, this is Nick and Jackie with Idaho Up. If you're ever in the Pocatello, <laughs> Idaho area, you need to check out the college market. I kid you not, it's like the best lunch food around. Mm -hmm. I've tried like four things off the menu and I always want to come back. Just a tidbit from Idaho. Okay guys, before I get into the review of the jacket, I gotta drop Jackie off somewhere first. As you can see in the video, she's currently wearing it, and that's simply because we haven't had the time to pick her out her own. However, this does bring up another point that I want to touch on. If you're going to be riding with the pastor on your bike, you should always be willing to sacrifice your own gear for that person. If you don't understand why, you probably shouldn't be riding a bike. Hey guys, so I just dropped Jackie off at Single Needle Tattoo, I believe that's the name. She's getting inked right now, so um, I'm gonna go enjoy a ride for a little bit, but if you have any concerns that this first manufacturing leather jacket isn't warm enough, you can go ahead and put those concerns to bed. I, uh, Jackie and I tried to do this video approximately a week ago and it was 43 degrees outside and we went on the freeway for approximately 40 miles and she was fine I, I was fine in a moto shirt and a leather vest so I know the jackets capable handling temp handling temperatures way below uh, 43 degrees Today's high, I think it was 63, don't quote me on that, and it's been a wonderful day. I'm glad I could sneak this ride in. Um, as far as the fit and finish goes, to give you an idea, I bought a large, and I think it fits true to size. I'm 5'10 and 189, right around there, soaking wet, and the jacket fits me fine. Obviously, it's bigger on Jackie because I bought it for me. The reason she's wearing it is because we haven't got around to getting her one yet but the finish on the jacket i'm going to do a tabletop on that in this video and it's it's i think the finish is awesome uh, granted i haven't had a lot of jackets but both the vest which i can do a review on later that i purchased and that jacket i think they look really cool the other thing is i mean it's not perfect because it, it, it's advertised as a jacket you can sell a handgun on and I have some issues with 
the holster placement as far as that goes that I'll explain on the tabletop but as far as a standalone leather jacket goes it's got a zip in liner that you can take out if it's a little too warm and the leather I just think looks awesome so we'll get into that in the tabletop I'm just gonna enjoy a ride and um, while Jackie's enjoying being in pain good luck Jackie Okay guys, the first thing I want to talk about is the material and the quality of the jacket itself. Let's start out with the leather, which I feel like is really thick. Seems like premium quality leather. Seems like it's going to wear well. I would expect this type of leather to be on a much more expensive jacket. But as with anything, time will tell. Moving on from that, let's talk about the zippers, which again, I feel like are quality zippers. They don't feel cheap. Um, they zip up very well they don't bind uh, same thing with the main zipper here it seems like a quality zipper no issues there moving on to the inside of the jacket where the liner is you will find that this zipper is a little smaller it doesn't feel as robust but i also don't foresee any potential issues with it, it seems like a good zipper um, while we're on the liner, this is a place I'm gonna ding the jacket. I feel like the liner is extremely thin, almost to the point that you would think it was pointless. However, I will say when you're wearing the jacket with the liner in it, it's more comfortable. So I'm sure that it does offer some level of warmth. Also keep in mind that I typically run a little cold. I like things warm. So I would have preferred to see a thicker liner but if you run a little hot, you might prefer this liner being the way it is. Moving on from there, let's talk about the snaps on the jacket, which again, I feel like they're pretty quality snaps. They don't feel like they're gonna bend and stop snapping correctly. They don't feel like they're gonna pull out of the jacket. And there's nothing that leads me to believe that they won't last for quite some time. Um, moving on to the snaps that are on the concealed carry portion of the jacket they they have the same fill and quality and i like that they made them look like the primers on a bullet i think that was a good touch the next thing i want to talk about is storage options on this jacket there are a ton of pockets on this jacket which really makes it nice and gives you a lot of different storage options you have the zipper pocket up here, which is a pretty good sized pocket. And then you have this smaller pocket right here. And behind that, you have this pocket that drops into this large storage compartment on the jacket. Inside there, you have two Velcro pockets. There's a smaller one up top and a larger one down bottom. And then you have this bungee pocket, which is a good fist sized pocket. One thing I like about this jacket is both sides of the jacket are a mirror image of each other and you have the exact same storage options on this side. From there, we'll move on to our hand pockets, which close with a button. Pretty good size pocket for those days that you're standing in the cold and you wanna keep your hands warm. Also, it's good for your passenger if they're getting cold on the back of the motorcycle, they can put their hands into your pockets. From there, We'll flip to the back side of the jacket where we'll find the ventilation pockets. For those days that it's a little warm but you still want to wear the jacket, you can take the liner out, open these, and get a little more ventilation. From there, we'll move on to the inside of the jacket where you'll, where you'll find your concealed carry pockets. Just like the other pockets on this jacket, the concealed carry pockets are exactly the same on both sides. That makes this an ambidextrous style jacket that both left-handed and right-handed shooters can use. When you open up the pocket, you'll notice they're rather large and inside you'll find an integrated holster. However, it is super small and this is where I'm gonna ding the jacket. For example purposes, this is one of my go-to concealed carry pistols. It's an MMP shield, nine millimeter. And as you notice, when you stick it in this holster, it's extremely difficult to get in there. You kind of got to work it back and forth. But once it's in there, it feels pretty secure. And when you snap it up, you'll notice there's not a big imprint. 
and when you're wearing it the imprint's not that big it's you won't notice it i would have liked to see them go with a different option because if you're somebody that can carry as a larger concealed carry you might want to stay away from this jacket however i do have another option for you and that is to just use a pancake style holster like this because these pockets are large enough that you can simply drop this holster in there and not use the integrated holster and it works just as well without leaving a big print what i would have liked to see them go with would have been a velcro style holster kind of like this bag right here inside this bag you'll see a velcro panel on the back that has a holster that velcros wherever you like it and they could have done the same thing on this jacket offered a couple different sizes holsters for people that like to carry larger weapons and then they you could have just velcroed it wherever you want on the inside of the jacket maybe that's something they'd consider doing in the future it's a good fix but all in all i'm happy with the concealed um, how this jacket is able to conceal the pistol you just got to be a little imaginative and it'll work for you Moving on, now I'm just giving you a visual of what this jacket looks like. Again, I'm 5'10", around 189 pounds, and I purchased a large. So this is how you can expect the jacket to fit if you're built like me while wearing nothing under it. Here I'm just illustrating that if you're built similar to me, you can wear a good thick quality sweatshirt underneath the jacket for those days that you feel like you need the extra warmth. I found it to be comfortable with both wearing the sweatshirt and without wearing the sweatshirt. And finally here I'm illustrating that you can wear the jacket, a sweatshirt, and a vest over the top of it on those really cold days and the layering of it all is pretty seamless. Keep in mind I didn't have to make any adjustments on my vest if that gives you a better idea of fit. Quick side note, one thing I forgot to mention is that the jacket does have pockets for spine armor, shoulder armor, and elbow armor, and that you can purchase First Manufacturing's armor separately for the jacket, and it's pretty affordable. Okay guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, do the three things, and I'll keep pushing content out. So until next time, keep up.